Yes, Lane, if you could walk us through when you're standing there on the sideline waiting to go in on the very first play of the game when the hole is left in the offensive line for John Schlemmer's spot, what's going through your mind? What are the emotions as you're trotting out there to take your position? Uh, the most emotions that just go through my mind is, you know, we, we lost a, a member of our family. And uh, more than a member of our family, but we lost our, our coach and someone that was basically a father figure to every single offensive lineman that's come through this uh, program. Um, so we're going to try to honor him any way we can because of just the impact and the influence that he had on all our lives. Um, one of the toughest, greatest men I've ever had the chance to meet in my life. And, uh, you know, like I said, we left the spot out there because we're missing, missing one of our Wildcats today. Um, and another thing, just being able to have the opportunity to wear his number was uh, even – it so, shows that there's so much bigger than football. It was a blessing for me. It was a blessing that – uh, and he allowed us to do that before he passed away, um, and a blessing that his family still still wanted to do it, that they were there, and, and they could see that. You know, I want to go out there and play my game elite anyways, but be able to do it a, a, for a little extra reason in that day with it, with having that number on me. Do you have any idea whose who's idea it was to do that at the start of the game? Yes. Uh, so I know it was, it was sort of a cumulative effort. Um, I know that – the coaches, they definitely wanted to go ahead and take the penalty, have a moment of silence sort of for coach and, you know, show that we were missing a Wildcat. Um, we we actually decided right before in the pregame to sort of bump Luke out to tackle for that very first play so that um, Coach Sarman was a guard, you know, when he played here. And I know he's always a guard at heart. And so we wanted to leave that spot open to, to show where he played and, uh, you know, represent that number well. John Hale. Landon, given everything you all have gone through this week, I think anybody would have forgiven you for not wanting to play or to, you know, have that emotion hanging over you. Just what were the last 48 hours like in those discussions about how you wanted to honor a coach by playing so well with that? Um, it was definitely hard, um, and it doesn't get any easier talking about it. Um, but, you know, we wanted to make sure that we did what he wanted us to do. Uh, every single day and I know he's sitting down up there watching us right now and um, you know having uh, the, the mentality and the grit that he had he would not want us to sit down and feel sorry for ourselves for one second the man never did it himself even though he was pumping drugs into his body and if for goodness sakes came out to practice not just hours after he had his first surgery there a couple weeks ago and um, the last thing that he would want us to do is sit back feel sorry for ourselves and and you know, miss a game or miss practice or not be able to do this or that. Um, just this is his mentality. He's a tough man, and he, and he loved his game of football. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, on, on one of the last sort of conversations they had for me, they said, you know, Coach Sarman, why why do you do this? You know, why do you still come out? Why do you come out after surgery? Why do you, you know, bring such this effort and this attitude and everything? And his simple answer was for the team. And uh, you know, you can't have a much better answer than that. A guy that's truly committed to the game of football and a guy that's truly committed to each and every soul that's out on that field. And what is best for us as growing us as men and being able to further further us as a football player and have the best opportunity we can out there. Jeff Drummond. Hey, Landon, can you uh, speak a little bit about, uh, you know, your relationship with Coach Schlarman went back a, a long time. You you had committed to Kentucky early, and you had known him probably since you were, I think, freshman yeah. in high school, something like that. Uh, just talk about the, the formation of that relationship and how he's, you know, been such a big part of your life for a, a great part of it. Yeah, so uh, he was actually not the, the person who originally kicked off my recruitment my freshman year, but he ended up taking it over almost immediately when I started coming to camps. Um, and then, uh, so they recruited me, recruited me. I went to camps, uh, a couple overnight camps, a couple day camps and everything. And with that, we started our relationship there. And like I said, this is, this is year eight that we had, that we had been around each other. And you know that's a that's a lot when you talk about a, co a college coach and a, and a recruit. You know most guys have a have a chance to have a relationship with those guys for, you know four maybe five years six at the most. And uh, for me to be able to sort of start that relationship early, I always knew I wanted to play under Coach Sarman just because of the man he was. You got the same guy on the field as you got off the field, and uh, he he day one 
when when I he started recruiting me, he sort of took me under his wing, and he wanted me to feel comfortable under him. He wanted to make sure that he was sort of a father figure, and the importance over football was developing me, and as a man, developing me in my faith, developing me in my character, and uh, as I, th I think he's done a, a dang good job of it. And you know, as time goes on, we've created an even tighter, tighter relationship. You know, all the hours that we put in together through camp, all the Sundays. You know, everybody's off and, you know, I'm sitting there in his office and we're watching film or, you know, a bunch of the senior linemen are in there watching film. Uh, we've been through good years, we've been through bad years, but, um, you know, mainly we've been able to change this program and I think a lot of it is due to him and uh, the way that he's been able to bring our offensive line together, bring our team together. He's one guy that you can ask anybody on this team that no matter who it is, no matter what position you are, everybody loved Coach Sarman. He was just a guy that you could get along with. He was a he was a tough guy, and he always brought the attitude. He always brought the mentality. Um, but again, we've we've just been able to keep a really tight relationship. You know, we we know when to cut up and we know when to be serious. And uh, up until his you know last days, he was still coaching us. We had a chance to go see Coach Sarman. Um, I reckon about a week before he passed away. Uh, me, DK, Drake, and Luke. And um, you know, I knew it was getting pretty bad at that point. But still, when we walked in there. He's just talking nothing about nothing but football, saying, man, y'all really got him after him at Georgia. He said, you know, keep your heads high, keep swinging. He was texting all of us saying, man, I love you. I miss you. I wish I was out there, and I'm sorry that I'm not. And for a man that's going through everything that he is and say, I'm sorry for not being there, you know, it hits hard. That man gave everything he had to this game. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better coach to be able to Spend that my last eight years with. Right, we got two more, Larry. Yeah, you know, Landon, well, appreciate what you just said about Coach. You know, what he meant to you. You always talk about him as a as a tough guy, but on the other hand, there's a pretty soft, lovable, gentle side of John too. Could, could you just talk? Maybe give us a few examples of some of that also. Oh, uh, you can start off with you know how he treats his kids and how he puts them as a priority. He puts his faith as a priority first and then it's his family. And that's something that he was always talking about was his kids. And we, when we were able to, uh, you know, go over to his house, you could see what a priority his family was and that he loved every single one of them with every inch of his heart. Something else is just the way he loved every single one of us. Uh, you know, he was vulnerable with us when he needed to be vulnerable. But I think that was, that was sort of something that made us so close is that he wasn't always the – the tough go get him like he was he was able to show emotion when he wanted to show emotion he was able to show different different sides of himself that made us respect him more as a coach and you know even if that was you know he he didn't want anybody else on the team to be able to see what he was going through and the struggles that he was going through how much he was really hurting but you know me drake and you know some of the older guys he really was able to sit down with us and sort of open up on one-on-ones and just you know be able to really learn what he's going through. Like one of the last drugs he was on made it to where he c could hardly walk. And uh, he made the bottoms of his feet almost completely blistered. And, but he was still going out there every single day and, and racing us to drills when he could. He was making sure that he was, he was showing that effort even though he could have been at home resting. Um, so, you know, that's sort of that, that sort of soft, sensitive side that he, he showed us that emotion. He showed us that it's okay for things to go bad in life. It's just 90, it's 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react. And that's a, that's a, a, a face for that model. You know, he 100% he thought that life was 10% and that's how he acted. It was 90% of how he reacted to what the situation got put into his life about. All right, we'll wrap up with uh, Mark Story. John have taken special pride in this particular game because you basically played the whole game without your starting guards. And, and guys, you know, came off the bench and stepped up. Absolutely. That was, uh, you know, he, he was definitely looking down on us. And, yeah, we had a bunch of guys on the, t on the team that want to fight for him as well. And some guys, he, he, he taught us from day one. When you're a freshman and you come in, one thing that he always told us is that one day your number's going to get called and you do not know when it is. And he tried to correlate that to life and he got to correlate that to football. You know, freshman year when I was in the swamp, I had no clue that I was going to be end up getting thrown in as a freshman down there. But my number got called and I had to step up to it. 
Same thing with Coach Sarman in his life. He didn't know when his number was going to be called to come come to heaven and go see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But his number was called, and he was ready. His soul was ready. His heart was ready. And uh, it's you know it's selfish for us. We we want him down here, but uh, he's not suffering, and uh, and and uh, he left a great legacy around here. But uh, I was really proud of uh, Quentin Wilson. Uh, Quentin came in and. Uh, right after the first play there and was able to play a really, really good game. I was really proud of him, especially being able to move from center to guard and uh, not really playing the guard position uh, before, even through the time he's been here, but really came out there and was a, uh, a very dominant force on the offensive line. I felt like did had really good movement, had really good plays. Um, but again, I think there's a, a line of guys behind us that are, that are ready to do that. And they want that chance to be able to go out there and uh, show Coach Sarman looking down on them that you know, he did a good job coaching us and that, that, you know, this is the reason that they're going to be able to do what they're going to do. Um, but again, I'm really proud of those young guys. And I, I think it, it really gives us a, a bright look into the future of what this offensive line is going to be.